Hello students, in this video we're going to take a quick look at the Ten Commandments. Now we're not going to explore every aspect of it, but just kind of do a, a basic drill down on, on the idea of the commandments and, you know, a little background on them. So first of all, the Ten Commandments, in terms of why do we call them the Ten Commandments? Well, another word that you should know is the Decalogue. That the Decalogue is derived from the Greek and it means literally ten words. And this goes back to the Hebrew. The Ten Commandments are referred to as the, the Ten Words or the Ten Phrases of God. And they're not actually called the Ten Commandments for the first time until the 16th century. Now, we have to make a distinction between the Ten Commandments and the stones that they're written on. The stones that they're written on are called the tablets. So there are two sets of tablets. There's the first set that God uh, gives to Moses. And then once Moses smashes those after he sees the golden calf, then there's another set that's made. So the tablets are separate from the commandments. The commandments are the moral laws that are inscribed on the tablets. Now in terms of the moral, moral commands actually rooted in the commandments, what they are, their content, we have to notice uh, that they, they concern the fundamental questions of the moral life. So we can talk about what's the greatest obligation? Well, to worship God alone, and that's the first few commandments, talking about worshiping God alone, no graven images, keeping holy the Sabbath, don't take the Lord's name in vain, all that sort of good stuff. But it also talks about the most important intergenerational obligation. So this is one of the, the familiar obligations. One is to honor the parents. So honoring the generations that came before you. Really meaning also to take care of them. Another is uh, of these family obligations is adultery. So not just that you honor your parents, but that you honor your husband or your wife. And, and family is really the crucial building block of the Jewish civilization. And actually, truth be told, of all civilizations. You know, as, as the family goes, so goes the nation, as they say. There's also the question of personal injury. So obviously the greatest one against uh, a person's physical integrity is murder. You actually kill them. Then there's the importance of property. You can't really have a civilization function without property. And theft directly undermines that. You just take what belongs to another person. Then there's the operation of justice. You know, witnesses are so crucial for bringing about justice, especially, you know, the farther back you go in time, the harder it is to collect evidence and that sort of thing. And so having people tell the truth and be honest in court, absolutely essential. And then there are also the movements of the heart. So it's not just that you don't physically kill or steal or commit adultery or lie, but that your heart is in the right place. And if you're someone who's coveting your neighbor's wife and goods, you want what your neighbor has, well, that's going to put you in a bad place, and, and that's going to lead to all these other sins going, going up the list. Now, another way we can talk about the commandments uh, in terms of the moral life is to look at, well, who, they, who are they related to? And the first three commandments, and this is in the, the Catholic numbering of things, we'll talk about the numbering later, but the, basically the first three commandments are all related to God. They all uh, are about the... Uh, shall we say, the, the vertical uh, dimension. The next seven commandments, numbers 4 through 10, are about the horizontal dimension. So they go sideways, you know, to my neighbor on my left and on my right. You know, so Don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery. So these two things, the relationship of ourselves to God and the relationship our, of ourselves to our neighbors, that's, that's what the moral life centers on. That's the very heart and soul of it. And so the commandments are you know, also center on those two relationships. They're, they're the fundamental building blocks of the moral life and the other smaller commandments that will come after them. Now, I mentioned earlier there's an issue with numbering. Well, believe it or not, there's actually a lot of disputes about how, how do people number the list. Because there are no numbers actually included in the scripture. There's a list of things, but there's no number given. And so people, you know, chop them up and divide them in different ways. Jews, Christians, Muslims, they all accept the Ten Commandments, but, you know, there's, there's variations in terms of how do we list them. And it's not, we're not going to go in depth into that, just something to, uh, to be aware of for yourselves.